everybody and welcome to part two of this tutorial about enema. In today's tutorial we're going to be focusing on how we actually apply the magnet to this particular analysis and what it does to the um, to all the mini magnetic fields that we were speaking about in the previous tutorial. So we know as a summary from the previous tutorial that a mole and atoms Atoms that are capable of spinning will generate their own mini magnetic fields and this will happen naturally and will not be induced. So in NMR we take advantage of this. Okay, so we place in a magnet, an external magnet. Okay, so this is the north pole of the magnet and this is the south pole of the magnet. Now, what that does is basically it creates an external magnetic field that's quite large, quite significant. Okay, so what you find is that because of this, the, um, there will be an external magnetic field created by the actual magnet because magnets send a magnetic field going from north to south. Okay, so from here, it's going from north to south. Okay, so this can be classified as B b0 okay so if you picture this particular magnetic field that is like a strong current okay if you're if you're in a river with a strong current um, you're probably going to get swept away with that current okay if you consider these mini magnetic fields okay of each of the hydrogens they're also going to do the same so they're going to become aligned normally with um, the external magnetic field because the external magnetic field is a little bit more stronger than those and so what is going to end up happening is that hydrogen this hydrogen will point that way that way so it basically organizes the hydrogens to point in that particular manner because before it was messy now the molecule is organized in a way okay so what happens here is um, all these are currently in the alpha energetical level. It's known as the alpha state. The alpha state is basically when the mini magnetic fields point in the same direction as the external magnetic field. So, um, so this is a low energy, okay? The lowest energy. So if we, if it's the lowest energy, basically that means that um, all of these at the moment will be in alpha state because if you're in a river and you just get swept away with that river, you're not fighting against it. You're being swept away, so it doesn't take much energy to be swept away by a river. Now, where NMR becomes interesting is what we do in NMR is we send through a whole bunch of radio waves. Okay, so we send through radio waves, the whole spectra of radio waves, so and radio waves have enough energy to sort of flip the direction of these magnetic fields, okay, these mini magnetic fields in the opposite direction, in the opposite way. It can flip um, certain energies of these radio waves can do that. So when they are flipped, they go up, they point up. That is actually known as a beta state, okay? So a beta state. Beta state is due to um, radio waves flipping the particular external magnetic fields the opposite direction. So this is highest energy. Okay, so highest energy because the um, molecule, in that case the atom, has to fight against the external magnetic field, against this power, this strength. And so it's going to take a lot, of, a lot more energy to do so. So um, that's the beta state. Okay, so just to summarize, um, what's going to happen is that radio waves will be sent through this molecule, okay, and some, some of them, 
For example, that hydrogen may go into its beta state. Okay, and once it realizes that it cannot maintain the beta state, it will come back down into alpha state, and that will release a particular signal. Okay, that resonance movement will produce a particular signal. Okay, so the essential thing of understanding here is that NMR is basically looking at the difference of energy levels between alpha and beta state. Okay, so um, that's quite important to understand. I'm just looking for my whiteboard marker. Found it. Okay, so that's radio waves. Okay, now I had a question from a student before as to. Um, say they, they basically said on the lines of why don't all of these hydrogens have the same energy anyway and the answer is no because it really depends on how much shielding those particular hydrogens have and we'll be discussing shielding in the next tutorial but one more thing I'd like to mention in this tutorial um, is the difference between carbon NMR and hydrogen NMR Okay, so if we consider carbon-13, let's use pens that don't work. Okay, so carbon-13 NMR, NMR analyzes carbon molecules. Now, these are rare, um, and therefore, because they are rare, um, you will not have something known as splitting for carbon-13. Okay, so analyzes spin on of carbon 13 whereas H1 NMR analyzes spin of H1 okay so that is basically the difference okay you can have other forms of NMR except they're not very popular because they don't really give you any information about your hydrocarbon Carbon and hydrogen are the best to analyze in an NMR example. Okay, so in the next lesson, we'll have a look at the effect of shielding and why it is that these particular hydrogens here have different energies and what actually causes that to change. So keep tuned. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you soon.